Welcome to Profiles in Caring. I'm Kimberly Perkins. For the last 20 years, a group led by UCLA anthropologist Susan Perry has spent thousands of hours and logged volumes of data all about the capuchin monkey. And the goal is very simple. If we can better understand how the capuchin monkey lives, we might better understand how we can all live together. Our Doug Jardine traveled to Costa Rica for the story. Kimberly, welcome to Lomas Barbudal, a biological reserve here in Costa Rica, and something different to start this story. Obviously, hopefully, I'm done shooting already. We started at five this morning as we entered this incredible reserve with a group of researchers here to study the capuchin monkeys. All I can say is enjoy in the comfort of home because you're not going to sweat as much as we have over about the last five hours. Sometimes I don't step really high. In a minor miracle in itself, we were up at 4.30, readying to meet the researchers who would walk us through the early morning darkness and towards the even earlier rising groups of capuchin white-faced monkeys. It was not an easy hike at all. In fact, one of the toughest things I've ever done. But sooner rather than later, in the first rays of dawn, the canopy-hopping capuchins made their initial curtain call. Let's go. And I basically fell in love with the place and the monkeys. I studied animal behavior and I did other um, mammal stuff beforehand and thought, okay, I need to grow up, I need to get a job. But before I do that, I really want to do the monkeys of a primate experience. And I got stuck. Stuck doing what UCLA biological anthropologist Susan Perry started back in 1990. As part of Perry's PhD project, she came over here and over here again. The stories are told in her book, Manipulative Monkeys, the Capuchins of Lomas Barbudal. Perry still makes regular trips here, but also is very comfortable leaving others to run the research, just like Vipka and Colleen Galt. We have a really, really large database of monkey development in the wild, which is one of very, very few primate um, projects that actually has this kind of database to look on. We don't know that much about the lifespan of a white-faced capuchin, for example. And we are one of very, very few projects that ha has done a long-term study. The reason why I'm actually kind of running a, a separate project from the broader monkey project is because we have a very different uh, method of collecting data. Um, so we do all day follows. We actually follow the same individual for several days. Because really, are we really interested in the sequence of events that happen in their lives? Because we want to know um, basically what kind of stressors they experience and how they deal with those stressors. And follow them we did up and down, east and west, north to south, heading somewhere and then headed back from where we came, hiking through ants, thorns, and a lot of bugs. And in doing so, we witnessed a first here as one monkey group finally stood up to another, all in efforts to control feeding during this dry season. The goal of today's encounter, a local fig tree. Take me back to about six o'clock this morning. Uh -huh. What was it that I saw for the first time and maybe you've seen before? What was happening in, among the groups? So Abby's was trying to come over here, uh, possibly for this fig that they're at now. Uh, possibly they were trying to go further up towards the mango trees. And Solos came along and the males uh, kind of charged at the group and started threatening them. And at first, Abby's ran, and Abby's is not known to be a very um, brave group. They have a tendency to turn tail and run. Um, we blame it on the alpha male, but you know, it could be the entire group. Uh, but today, I guess they decided the fig was worth a fight, and they turned around, and the alpha female and the alpha male and the beta male uh, charged back at the two males from Solo's group and chased them off. And we kind of went back and forth for a while. They went. They're a fairly uh, evenly matched group, I guess. But eventually they seem to come to some sort of peaceable situation because uh, Abby's veered off towards the fig and uh, Solo's group kind of went back up the stream that we were following. And uh, they're, they're pretty alert still. Um, they seem to be worried about a return, but they seem to have won enough for now. Mainly it's, it's the, the biology and the social development of the monkeys but also in, in an evolutional aspect you can learn a little bit more about humans. I mean the, the span between white-faced capuchin and humans ev from a, terms of evolution is very large so we can't, you can't watch a capuchin for an hour 
and say, I know something about humans now. And there are certain, like, certain basics that are the same throughout all species, um, certain drives, certain motivations, the need to sleep, the need to eat, the need to feed, the, the need to reproduce. Um, and protect your territory, yeah. as we saw as we traveled back it's and forth the same. It's the same in all species, so yeah, you can learn a little bit more about yourself, but you can't like make a direct line of like, okay, we have 20 years of capuchin research, so humans are like this. They can't do that. It's only 7.30 in the morning. We've been hiking since five, I don't know, maybe three and a half, four miles already. A lot of sweat, a lot of humidity, some cuts, some bites from army ants, but this is an absolutely amazing trek for me, first time here following these capuchin monkeys. Initially watching them jumping over the canopy of trees and then a little conflict with another tribe of monkeys. And now we get to sit and watch them eat figs and groom each other. It's just what you would hope to find. Research, conservation and education, that is what this group is all about and the Capuchins of Lomas Barbulal offer an outdoor classroom like none other as data is gathered to study the evolution of primate intelligence. Whether following one Capuchin for 10 minutes or following the same monkey all day, these folks never get tired of gathering that data, information they hope will lead to the long-term survival of the Capuchin and better environmental education efforts among those of us walking on two legs. When Profiles in Caring returns, what researchers are learning from fecal samples and why a new behavior they're seeing among the capuchins can lead to further impressive data. So they will do things like get very close together while they're grooming and stick um, fingers in each other's eyes or up their noses, down their throat. 